All right. All right. We're back. We're back. Uh, special day today. Special day today. We're recording this on Sunday and a very special day because it's Mother's Day. That was good synergy right there. Oh, good. Yeah. Yep. Hey, I, I got to see my mom. She's in Marin. Yeah. Your grandma. I was going to ask, how is she's mom? good? She's 91. She's living in Marin uh, in a senior living place, but she's totally independent. And she is a great lady and she's in great shape. Yeah. And uh, it was fun to see her. Really great. She is a very special lady, that Nana of mine. And she's a 91 year old hippie. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. She's got blue in her hair. She's quite someone to get advice from. If you're ever looking for advice, hit up my Nana because she will make you want to live out your wildest dreams. Older, older people, believe it or not, get, uh, get some wisdom, right? She's got a lot of wisdom. You've got a lot of wisdom in that case. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> At 65. Yeah. Yeah. A young 65. And uh, your mom. Yeah. Yeah. Well, let's take this moment to give a shout out to all the mothers out there, but a special, special shout out to the mothers in our family. Yep. Uh, my Nana, my grandmother, all my aunts. But a very special shout out to my mom, Barry. She's in the other room right now. We apologize for recording this intro today, but you gave us permission. We love right. you dearly. I think the older I get, the more, more I realize just how much sacrifice both you guys made, but specifically mom, just in raising a child. It, it's a pretty unbelievable feat to, to create a human out of nothing. And the older I get, I see like, Oh my God, I, I took for granted some of the, a lot of the stuff as a child of just making sure I was alive and healthy and had all these opportunities. And so happy mother's day to all the moms out there. Big special one for Barry mama B love you. You, uh, you scored big on the mom front. You yeah. A great mom. Hey, you, you chose wisely. I, I did. <laughs> <laughs> we all, we all won on that one. I did and pursued her hard. Yeah. Well, it, it worked out. It worked yeah. out. So happy Mother's Day. Yeah. Everyone. Happy Mother's Day from Marathon Minute. Yep. On, an, on another note, you're repping. Dubs. He's got the dubs on the hat. Golden Big State win. Warriors. Yep. Big win. Big win last night. Yeah. You know, we dropped one game. The haters start talking, you yep. know, yep. and it's what the Warriors need. You know, people counted us out after the last couple of years and I think we're back. Don't count out our boys. Game four tomorrow night. Yeah. And you'll be Chase, in attendance. Guess who is going? Yeah. I scored a ticket. I know. I'm, I'm jealous. Which is odd because I'm very nervous watching the Warrior games uh, on TV. In fact, I can't. I, yeah, it's a weird, I, weird thing. I'm, I'm okay watching them in person because I feel at the stadium or arena because I feel like I'm part of the You action. feel like you can impact the game. Right. Like at home, you're like, Screen left, screen left. Right. You know, but they can't hear you. But when you're in the arena, you can help Steph and Clay and Draymond and and indeed they've and in everyone. fact have mentioned that my being there has helped them. That's why they're probably going to be on the pod at some time to talk about that. Yeah. We're we're, we're working on that, right? Yeah, it, it's up. in the works. Our our people are in communication, but no promises on dates just yet. Yeah, they haven't committed yet firmly. Yeah. So warriors are rolling. We will be keeping you updated on the Oakland perspective of watching the Warriors. It is a little weird, you know, them playing in San Francisco. Yeah. I do feel some type of way about it, but at the end of the day, they are still, they're still our team and we're going to support them regardless, even if they're not an Oracle. They, they grew up in our hometown of Oakland and yeah. they've kind of moved out of the neighborhood, but they're, they're just right across the Bay. So we'll, we'll, we'll keep them in the fold. Yeah, for sure. Hey, exciting guest. Uh, number 28. Number 28. 28. Yeah. Let's, let's get to our guest. Fen Pater. Fen is actually someone who deserves a lot of credit for not just the branding of the show, but the show in general. He was supposed to be one of my first or second guests. When I first kind of thought of the idea, one of the things I thought was so cool about it was that I would get to talk with these creatives like Fen and me being friends with them have this kind of inside perspective to the work they do. And I would be able to ask questions about the ins and outs of doing these really cool projects and bring these ideas to life. And it wasn't until episode 28 that we got him on, but I think it worked out in the timeline because he's been able to do a lot of really cool and exciting things in the, in the last year and a half. And so to talk about that was really cool. Not only was he one of the inspirations behind starting the show and supposed to be one of the first guests, but he designed our entire logo and branding 
and the design behind yeah. our first t-shirt. And so we talk about the process of how we came to our logo, which actually was, was really crazy. It just happened like that, but we talk about that process and we have a lot to thank him for in, in creating the visual identity that is marathon minute. And yeah, we get into a whole lot of topics. Fen right now is working as a content creator, videographer, video editor for Recess Studios, which is a boutique agency that does campaigns for the likes of Nike, Travis Scott, Bape, you know, some of these really big brands. Yep. And Fen is behind the scenes making this content happen and shooting some really cool stuff, doing some unbelievable edits. And we get into all of that. And, and maybe actually better, Max, that uh, it took a year and a half to get Fen uh, on the pod because in that year and a half, I think you mentioned, uh, he's done a lot, uh, including, you know, moving, I think, from Portland to uh, to the big city, the Big Apple, yeah. uh, and starting a career there. And uh, and he's he's off to a great start in his creator role. I like I like the fact that you bring on uh, lineup creators for our, our episodes because... Um, that's a world I is very foreign to me. I have to tell you the truth. Um, I don't think I knew any creators before, maybe one, actually, someone in the clothing industry that goes way back. But you're introducing me and our audience to these folks who are who are really they are creators. They create content. They create art. They create video. Yeah. And uh, it's a really different world for me. And I hope uh, I hope our audience enjoys uh, getting to know these guys who are out there kind of putting stuff out in, in the world of um, social media and content. Uh, yeah, Finn has got to be one of the most artistically gifted people that I've ever met when it comes to photography, videography, editing, graphic design. He can make clothes. He can do welding. Like the amount of things that's in this guy's wheelhouse is just ridiculous and it was really cool because I spent a lot of time with him in the pandemic uh, creating videos and just kind of building his portfolio. And I recognized then that the quality was top notch. And then to then see his work kind of gain the recognition of the world now that it's, you know, yep. for some of these big brands was really cool to talk about with him just because I, I you know, I kind of saw his work in its earlier phases when it wasn't necessarily on such a big scale. And sure. now to see it on a, on a big scale is just really cool. And we talk about all that and more. Very, very exciting guest. I enjoyed meeting Fen. Yeah. Let's get to episode 28 with Fen Pater brought to you by Cafe Fanny. The best granola in the game was, I think was Cafe Fanny introduced to us by mom. Yes. So, wow, on Mother's true, Day, point. Cafe Fanny, the best granola in the game, was actually brought into our lives by our mother. It's only right. You should go get some and try it out yourself. Absolutely. We had some for breakfast this morning for Mother's Day. <laughs> you know it. With the box right behind us. <laughs> oh, my God. What do you yes. think of the green and orange? Does it go? It's a good look. YouTube okay. audience, let us know podcast audience watch it on youtube let us know yep all right episode 28 marathon minute boom fan hey you guys haven't met this is no, yeah. no this is my inaugural uh uh voyage on the uh, starship fan <laughs> oh, oh my gosh <laughs> nice to meet you fan i've heard <laughs> i've heard your name uh so much over the last couple of years max talks about you a lot and i know you guys have done oh, a lot stop, of oh, stuff um <laughs> you know kind of professionally or you know on in in the world you guys where your worlds collide so uh nice to finally meet you yeah, nice to meet you too. Yeah. What color is your hair right now? It's like it's crazy. Right? Oh my goodness. <laughs> wow. It's a lot of it too. I dig yeah. it. Thank you. I wish I had hair like that. Yeah. <laughs> you did one day, Dad. I'm not sure I ever had hair like that. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Bro, wow. We yeah. we made it. Look at us. No, it's been a minute. Been... It's been a minute. I stayed with Fen when I was in New York in December so I didn't it wasn't that long ago that I saw you no but, but it's yeah it's been a minute since we got to just like sit and chat and kick it yeah 
Yeah. So we get to do that. We just will then broadcast it. Well, actually, there's certain stuff we, you know, we could take out of the podcast, obviously. I do want to start off by, you know, giving a little bit of context to our listener or to our viewer of our relationship and how we met and, you know, how we got to this place where now we have you on the podcast. Also, I do want to, I want to give you a formal big shout out and thank you for creating the aesthetic that is Marathon Minute. I did wear this shirt on purpose. I was going to wear the one with all the logos on the front, but I realized that I've worn that in like three of the episodes this season. So I was like, people on YouTube are going to be like, wow, Max wears that shirt every day. But (laughs) I did want to wear a shirt with the design on it because we get a lot of compliments on the logo, on the shirts, and that is all thanks to you and your amazing design. So I do want to give a formal thank you and a shout out to you because you created this aesthetic and it's great. We are, I mean, this was the first, this was the first logo you sent and I don't think we tweaked it at all. We did a little bit of tweaking on the, uh, on the shirt design, but this logo came in and it was like, yeah. there's nothing else to change <laughs> yeah, so... i guess wait i guess this will be kind of cool when i i forget what kind of inspo i sent to you i you know i sent you the checkered flags i sent well the name has marathon in it so that's maybe where kind of the rings came from but from your perspective how did you kind of come to this design i mean i feel like we talked more than we mood boarded for sure and i yeah. like can't fully remember all of those conversations but yeah for sure like the checkered flags the rings and kind of like also wanting to represent like a track kind of space yeah. well run a lap was like yeah. i think that might have been something we talked about the nipsey saying run a lap totally and then i think on the back of that shirt it, for the like- for the youtube <laughs> audience here yeah i think I we know. just kind of had fun and went crazy and like took the logo and then just expanded and like i don't know the astronaut's kind of a wild card but yeah well that's i've i've always kind of talked about how i like astronauts and the space concept the whole man on the moon idea so i think you tapped into that but yeah incredible incredible work do you you have one of the marathon minute t-shirts i almost were yeah i have a few okay good good but yeah i think i gave you i think i gave you one of every color which is a bit excessive, but like I said, you were the dude who created it. So I was like, you have to have these. Um, We're so comfortable too. Yeah. Broke our budget. (laughs) (laughs) No, sometimes we tend to jump around time-wise, like in the the chronology. Is it chronology? Is that a word? Uh Uh-huh. The chronology of your life. But I want to start off talking about what you're doing now, what you want to do in the future, how you got to where you are. I think it's cool to start kind of where we met and kind of go from there and then we'll jump around. When was it that we met? We met probably, I don't know the year, but it was 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 probably the year before the pandemic. I remember seeing you around people on Mars every once in a while, you'd come in and I didn't really know who you were. I just knew you were helping out Kyle and Jalen with some design stuff and then from there, like, yeah, I, th- I think we just kind of like met through that and then, you know, became homies, but it wasn't really until kind of the beginning of the pandemic when you started doing a lot of work back and forth from, or you were living in Hood River, right? So I was living, <clears throat> I think we met 2019 and then I was fast forward to the pandemic when we really like got to know each other Kyle, one of my good friends and your roommate at the time for the people who don't know. um, Like I was going back and forth, living an hour away and he was, excuse the sirens too. Hey, the man is, the man is in New York, really Um, in New York. Yeah. Why is your building's not on fire? (laughs) No, we're good. Um, And yeah, so I was back and forth. And then you guys kind of graciously let me stay at your place instead of traveling four days a week. Um, Fen was our, Fen was the third roommate. Yeah. (laughs) That couch, that couch was your bed that, you know, 
it wasn't like every once in a while that was like your room for a bit it really was which was it great was like four days a week I think that was probably my room yeah I remember you you had a lot of people in Portland that uh, you were working with whether it be artists you were doing music videos for or just a lot of your work was in Portland and your family was living in Hood River so it just made sense honestly it was like you don't need to be driving an hour back and forth four or five days a week, crash on the couch, be our third roommate, have a great time. And you can do right. a lot of this work from a much closer location. And I do kind of just want to talk about that time. Cause I think it was, had you graduated at that point? Yeah. So I had, I graduated in pandemic in 2020. I went to, I went to school for photography so I have a BFA in photo, um, but kind of studied a little bit of everything within fine art. Um, and that's why I had all these contacts in Portland. So I'm going to school there, living there full time for, for four years and then like making connections, meeting new clients and kind of building client relationships. And then pandemic hits, I break my lease, move an hour outside of the city to live with my family and graduate online and it was weird and bizarre like for a lot of people right. um and then yeah as things kind of started to open back up it just got insanely busy busier than I had ever been and then yeah you guys kind of came along and we were working together a bit and then it was just like just stay here <laughs> like why are you yeah. going back and forth so. yeah so I do kind of want to pick your brain a little bit about what you were thinking during this time, because I remember we kind of had some conversations about this and you kind of said, like, I just want to make as much content as I can right now. Like you were doing a ton of music videos. We connected and made a bunch of just short clips that we thought were cool. Everything was shut down, but there were still a lot of people who were willing to connect, whether it be you know, from a distance or just respecting safety precautions, you were still cranking out a bunch of crazy, cool content. Okay. And I was fortunate where I was like, Hey, if you need a subject for anything, like I'll do it because I had seen your work and I knew who you were. And it was like, it was all just so cool. So I was down to help out in whatever way possible, whether it be a PA, I was your PA for something. <laughs> whether it be uh, actually do, being a model or just juggling a soccer ball somewhere. So just kind of walk me through what was in your head at that point. Yeah, so I was, I think I made the decision to move here six months before the move. So at that point, it was like an early thought and the thought and just like continuing, like once we kind of figured out how to move safely through the pandemic and like how to work safely, I, I think the amount of work that I was doing is kind of like, uh, how do I say this? Like, it was a big part of it is just the belief in like power in doing and like continuing the body in motion stays in motion. So to like continue working through it, I think if there's something you want to accomplish, like getting, doing it, it will separate you from anyone else, you know? and just kind of continuing to push forward. It was like a weird time. Everyone's trying to figure out how to move through the pandemic and how to work and kind of if they want to like switch their life up or what they want to do. And part of it, I was only shooting photos before and then kind of transitioned into like only shooting video. Um, I guess I was shooting a, a bit of video, but then like strictly went to only video and I was like let's just do this and make this happen with no like one big goal other than to like meet people and continue working and knowing it would lead to something but not really knowing what at that time yeah that's something that we talk about a lot with our guests is that a lot of times the best thing to do when you have some goal or when you even don't know what to do is just to start and I think you were doing that at an extremely high level. You were doing like five, six projects at once. I, I know because you were living under my roof and you were editing all night that you were editing all night and then people were hitting you up all day to do these projects. And so 
I really, I credit you for the amount of work that you accomplished during that period, because that was a time when the world kind of shut down and a lot of people stopped working and you kind of did the opposite. You were like, oh, like, I'm going to crank it up now that like, I kind of can. And yeah. I think a lot of that is, is the reason why you've been so successful since that time. And so, you know, let's, let's talk a little bit about the move to New York. Uh, at what point did you decide or think, you know, I love Portland. I grew up an hour outside of it or the Pacific Northwest is great, but in order for me to achieve some goals, spread my wings, I'm going to New York. Can you just talk a little bit about your yeah. thought process behind the move and what inspired it? Yeah, I think it was like my in school, I had a pretty strong friend group. Um, and my best friend slash studio mate, who is now my current roommate out here. Ollie? Yeah, shout out Ollie. Shout out Ollie. Um, he's he grew up in Long Island um, and then hey. went to school in Portland. And we met and that kind of like put the word in my head of like, hey, New York's amazing. Let's try this from like a few years before even thinking about the move. And then the pandemic hit and it was like, OK, what do we have to look forward to? We don't really know, but let's make something. Um, and yeah. yeah, New York was that. And so we what, like, what's the what's the allure or what was your allure to new york and you know look we hear this a lot we talk to people who are uh in the arts in the creative side and and los angeles and uh and new york are just kind of magnets for okay. creatives just like i guess you know the bay area is a is a magnet for tech uh there's something about new york that that yeah. has a gravitational pull pulling all these creatives over there what was, what was your kind of sense of what what lies in store for me in new york what's new york all about i mean it was exactly that it was like la or new york and i had to make the decision and new york was more foreign it was a little more of an like a place to explore la was still west coast growing up on the west coast it was a little more familiar and Max and I actually went to LA together on a trip and that was kind of that trip was like a big deciding factor of like did I make the right decision because yeah. New York it was let's pick New York because it'll teach me way more it's something totally new and then going on that trip to LA was kind of like all right did I make the right choice and I, yeah at the end of that trip I was yeah. like I'm so excited for this move but I think going back to that it is like LA and New York are such magnets um, for film and video especially um, I think New York can pull like more fashion sometimes and LA is like super heavy in video so it was a weird like back and forth with a love for fashion and a love for video and I think New York was just a little bit more like the i don't know it pulls a different kind of person yeah and it like the the culture and the people that i wanted to be around and no shade on la like i have so many friends there and i love it but it was just something new i feel like when i i mean obviously i know you but like i just feel like it's just uh, it's a great fit like i feel like you and new york vibe very well like especially the type of like photos that you take and the videos that you edit, I feel like that's much more a New York vibe versus like an LA, like a beach, palm trees, sunset. Like that's, you know, that's great, beautiful and all, but I feel like your style and like seeing a lot of the content that you were making before, I feel like matched a lot better with New York. And even like it, New York is like the perfect place to kind of, you know, do what you do and create the type of stuff that you create with those type of people and all that. So I think, I think you made the right decision. And, you know, I want to talk a little bit about how, how it's been, like how life is, has changed. I know, obviously I lived with in your apartment for a week. And so I've gotten to see, you know, this new life that you're living and, and this and that, but talk a little bit about moving to New York. You, you moved as a freelancer and you were a freelancing for, I don't know, a couple months was it? And then 
Yeah, so I think I moved here at the end of January 2021. Um, and I freelanced until that summer. So I freelanced for like five months. Okay. Um, a lot of that was like returning to Portland to connect with past clients just because I didn't have a clientele out here. Um, so it was scary. It was a weird five months. It was yeah. super fun because it was like getting to explore and like but it's very scary and like trying yeah. to like meet new people and also be on like a shoestring budget it was it was like a weird weird place so I kept going back to Portland to work and like kind of keep the ball rolling and then return to New York and kind of would just edit and continue networking out here yeah had you been to New York uh before you moved to New York so I had been once when I was super young and then I had been in 2019 for a week and then I was supposed to go before my move, um, like a few months before my move and tested, had a false positive for COVID. So couldn't, oh, yeah. I remember that. That was the whole thing. Um, yeah. So I hadn't been for like two years. Yeah. So it was, it was definitely a bit of a leap for sure. Um, so you eventually started working at an agency, Recess Studios, which you're still working at now. Can you talk a little bit about what inspired that decision and just a little bit about how that experience has been since? I know, and maybe a little bit about just kind of your role and your title. I think it's content creator. You can You can give more information than I know. Um, but can you just talk a little bit about what inspired the move to an agency and then what that experience has been like and some of the work that you've been able to do, which I know is is pretty damn cool, some of the stuff you've been uh, shooting. Yeah, yeah it's, that might be a, a few different questions. So ask yeah. if I miss any of that. But I think, yeah, the what kind of pulled me towards the agency was wanting to work with a team a lot of my freelance was solo projects which I still take on here and there and it's fun to just kind of like do a passion project that I can like fully have creative direction on but to do it constantly I think it's draining and then also to work on a team it's it's just so fun to have that like those moments together whether it's like staying up till 1 a.m to like finish the project or if it's just like a big win when we get a new a new project with a brand we love or whatever it may be. Um, so now when you talk about a team fan, uh, you know, what, what does that mean? Cause you know, in yeah. your industry, a team is different obviously than, you know, other industries. Right. What, what's a team look like at a, at an agency like yours? Yeah. So we have the team super like going into it too. This is my first agency job. So it was like, so new to me. So I walk in the first day and I, don't really know what any of the titles mean um, other. So I, my title is like post-production slash content creator and like video editor, um, kind of a little bit of everything. And I think a lot of people at the agency, because we're still a boutique agency, like we tend to wear more than one hat, yeah. um, but we have strategists, we have creative directors, um, content directors art directors and then there's project managers so there's just all these different roles and it's kind of like people that will communicate with clients to everyone that's like going through and actually like working on the project to you know yeah it's it's a big team but it's super fun to kind of like see how the project moves through each step yeah, I do. I want to get into a lot more of what you're doing now, but I kind of want to save that for a little bit later. I want to go backwards and kind of talk about how you've been able to get to this place, because now we've, we've established you are creating content for Recess Studios, a boutique agency that's doing stuff for Nike, Air Jordan, Travis Scott. What are some what are some other campaigns? Bape and Union. Like you, uh, an agency that's doing really big projects with big brands and you are a lot of the, like for people listening or watching, you know, 
anytime you go on the sneakers app or you're on Instagram and looking at some of these big brands, like you are the one who's either capturing this content or editing it. Like you are behind the scenes putting out what us consumers are seeing. So I think that's really cool. And now that we've established that, I think it'll be cool to kind of go back and see, you know, how you've gotten here. You talked a little bit about how you graduated from art school and it's, it's clear if to anyone who knows you, you are one of the most <clears throat> artistically gifted people that I've had the pleasure of meeting. And I hope you know that. But for you, yeah. when did, when did you, or when did someone in your family, like, come to the realization that not only do you like art and are interested in art, but this is something that you're really talented on and you should be following that track. Like I started taking soccer very seriously at a young age, because I was like, I'm good at this. I love it. It can get me into college and I want to play professionally. So I'm going to, you know, do everything I need to do to follow that track. At what point did you kind of realize like, oh, art is my thing and I'm going to go on that track to, you know, make a career out of this? Yeah. Um, I think like my parents are both very creative and, and like my mom is an art teacher and my dad has worked in film and he's also like does metal work and welding and just a bunch of like random different creative things. Um, so I think at a young age, they both fostered that a lot. Um, and but I don't think I really realized like, oh, this is what I love to do until probably like middle school. I remember seventh grade giving a presentation. They were like, pick a college, give a presentation on or to give a presentation on. And I gave I forget what school it was, but it was an art school. And I would like claimed that I would go for graphic design. I was like, this is my thing. This is what I want to do. And then fast forward to high school, it was like the only classes I cared about when signing up for classes were like, how do I get into the, all of the art classes or art related classes? Yeah. Um, were you a photographer? Did you take a lot? I mean, were you, you know, you grew up, you both grew up in the age where you uh, have a camera on your person, you know, for yeah. uh, 24 hours. Not, you know, you guys didn't have cell phones right away, but the for, iPhone wasn't invented until high school. That's true. That's so true. I, well, we, yeah, I had them. I, kids had them in middle school for sure. Well, you're a few years younger. You're younger. <laughs> but uh, uh, did, did you, uh, did you find yourself taking a lot of photographs either with your phone or with, uh, you know, a camera of some sort or, or Definitely. was photography not kind of your I, thing? It, it wasn't my main focus at first. It was always like drawing and graphic design. I grew up skiing and skateboarding and surfing a little bit. And so like all of those sports are so logo and graphic heavy that yeah. that was my inspiration. That's what was in my face every day. So it was like, why not participate in that? And like it, from an artistic standpoint, and so then in class doodling some uh, new some graphics while you know you're supposed to be always. learning U.S. history. Are you doodling you know, <laughs> yeah. a graphic for a you know surfboard or stuff? Yeah, always. Yeah. Um, yeah, probably too often, honestly. But well, that... we've talked to your history teacher uh, in <laughs> preparation, and he's wondering what the hell you were doing in class. So let the man talk. <laughs> um, yeah. So it was. It started with that, and then you know, being around these sports, I think kind of led to, oh, now we want to capture them and film them and like show, show that in a new way, like the GoPros, the iPhones, everything was kind of leading in that direction. But I think the big step was I going into high school, I couldn't get into any art classes, they were all full. Um, and there was a multimedia classes. And it was learning Photoshop, video editing and website design and that's the only class I could get into and it was kind of a second pick at the time and I took it all four years and eventually got into some art classes but it, that's kind of where the love like was like really fostered and like shown like oh there's a lot more to this um and that's yeah once I started my freshman year of high school I haven't stopped video editing or using Photoshop so it's been like eight or nine years now. Yeah. 
I definitely wish that I took those classes because as we speak, I have a Premiere Pro video exporting that's been going for 36 hours and I don't know why. <laughs> <laughs> like, 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 and it's just like the simplest functions. Like I'm like trying to like change a color of something and it's like somehow the whole screen just like, or my whole like editing, like, right, yeah, well, screen disappears. And I'm like, we'll deal with going? that after this. Yeah, time. no. But, can, uh, you, can you get on a plane, <laughs> Fen, and come out here? <laughs> no, I definitely, well, I do think, I do think something that's very interesting is you, uh, not only did you take, so you took some multimedia class in high school, but then you made the decision to go to art school. And I want to talk a little bit about uh, the decision to do that and the experience, but I also just want to talk about kind of this idea of being self-taught versus like higher educationally taught, but how do you kind of dissect the difference between some stuff that you've learned on your own versus some stuff that was taught to you formally? Yeah, I think my his like being able to learn like art history and kind of approach art in like um, a more well-rounded world is like was the benefit of going to school from an academic standpoint like that is something that now when there's references and things like that it's like I understand it I can talk about it and it's amazing I think going into school it was the decision was made not really for that purpose the decision was made because yeah. I didn't fully know like where in art I wanted to be or how like where like how how can I make art into a career and at that point video wasn't really it still wasn't really like my thing I was yeah. only doing photos I went to school to study photography um and have now have like a very traditional photography like background through that um and just through the nature of like where things have headed with social media have like transitioned into video so now working in a field that's video I didn't go to film school I went to art school right. so it's like it's it doesn't fully click and it I'm still kind of like a little bit not uneducated but like self-taught right so yeah. in a film world where in an art world i can hop in and if we're at a museum i can you know critique a piece and like reference art history and do that kind of thing and that's it's a interesting dynamic where yeah. it's something i'm super grateful to have done and the process of it was amazing and beautiful my mom says i have like four years of therapy through school <laughs> like and making art um which is like a way that I love to think about it is I just learned so much about myself through that process but I don't know that it was needed for my career I think portions of it were but like I didn't need that certificate or all of those learnings to go into film no, can I, can I ask, uh, and you don't have to go into it if you don't want, but, you know, it's an interesting comment. You learned a lot about yourself uh, going through uh, school. What can you expand on that just a little, if you if you don't mind? Yeah. yeah, I think like, I don't know, I loved it, like going to school and creating projects. <clears throat> a lot of something one of my professors said is most people in their 20s, when they make art, it's about themselves, whether or not they know it. And so I think we're all, you know, given these projects where we have to kind of come up with a concept and execute, it doesn't really matter what the medium is, that's pretty broad. And through that, I think we're all making art about ourselves and the things that we're dealing with and kind of, you know, whatever's on our mental and we're trying to figure out, it's like, you know, it's a way of processing it and then critiquing and talking about it with a group of people that you learn to know and love. So it was a really beautiful experience through that. Yeah, I think, Interesting. yeah, I think you saying that kind of just reminded me of like, just kind of the foundation of art in itself is a form of expression, you know, like, mm -hmm. whereas for me, when I was in college doing projects, it was like, 
a business plan or doing right. accounting charts, stuff like that, where I'm not putting any of my self express I'm not able to express myself through that. Whereas I feel like art in itself is going to be a form of self-expression. So if you're giving these projects, yes, the medium or whatever subject they kind of give you direction on, it's still going to be very much influenced by yourself and your outlook on whatever project that is. So I think inherently you're going to learn a bit more about yourself because all of the projects has a lot more of you in them versus me studying finance or business. It's a little bit more objective, right? Objective or subjective, objective. objective. Yeah. Objective. And, and I think just kind of the idea of, of college in general or school in general, education in general, when I look back and I, when I talk to people who look back on their formal education, whether it be college or somewhere else, a lot of what they end up doing in their career is very different than what they studied in college. You know, me personally, I studied finance. I'm playing soccer. Couldn't be more different, but obviously I I expect to have another career at some point, but through the last six, seven years post-college, I've realized I probably don't want a basic finance job. And looking back, like I wish I kind of, was able to know what my interests were at the age I am now, back when I was 18. So I could have taken that Photoshop class or done some of those things that maybe would have, you know, tailored more to my interests. So I think it's really interesting that, you know, you're someone who went to art school and now are a content creator. Someone from the outside might think like, oh, you, you perfectly aligned your, your college education with your career path. But in reality, it's, it's really different doing a lot more video centric content now is very different than you talked about. You got a, a degree in photography. It was photography, right? Yeah. Yeah. So it's interesting that kind of dynamic. Yeah. I mean, and there's still a lot of crossover, of course. Like yeah. I think it's, there's so many parallels, but definitely like being on set for like a project with nike it's like everyone not everyone there's a lot of self-taught people but then there's also the people that went to film school and it's just a new vocabulary and it's all stuff i've i'm also like one of the self-taught people i don't think you know my education led to that but you know sometimes i will shoot stills or you know do a photo project here and there so it's not like I've fully escaped it by any means, you know, I still love it. No, there's definitely a lot of overlap. And I think it's, it's, it's a helpful overlap, you know, it's not like, you know, I asked this question of another photographer we had uh, on the podcast and, and I'll be, I'll ask it of you Uh, with your photographic background uh, and your interest. Do you, do you walk around and, think ah there's a good photo or that's a good photo or you know are you kind of looking i mean when i walk around i'm looking for other stuff but yeah. are you looking around uh in your environment just on a walk to the bagel store whatever and saying that would be a, that would be a cool photo or not yeah no i think i am and some days it's definitely turned on that like sense is just turned on so much more than others like I'll be walking some days and not even think that I'll be so caught up with something else. Um, I really feel that when I travel, that is just like on the whole time, yeah. whatever that feeling is. It's like I am every corner I'm, I turn, I'm like, oh, how could I frame this? I'm looking at things in a new way. I think as soon as I kind of get out of my daily routine, my brain goes to that and it's like, oh, what what is this? And like, how, how could I shoot it? Or what would I do differently? Yeah, I do that. I do that at times too. Like, even just the other day, I was driving by my house and you know, uh, not this house, my my apartment where I'm living in Oakland, but there's like that church at the bottom of the hill before. Yes. And it's like unbelievable uh, lighting on this church and like really cool colors and mm-hmm. just a cool aesthetic. And like, I was driving with Azael, you know, Azael, and we're like, we should have a photo shoot here. So I think 
that that was not necessarily on for me you know at a different time in my life but I think as I've gotten a lot more into that side of things now it's kind of always turned on and especially uh I don't know if you've seen but I'm doing uh, a photo book where I'm taking film photos documenting a player's perspective throughout the whole year and then we're going to put together a book uh, of the roots and so now a lot of times like on our trips or just there'll be certain moments where I'm like damn like this this would be a really cool photo and so even like today after practice we had finished up and like guys were kind of just messing around and like training was totally done but I was like oh this is a good time so I like ran inside like grabbed my camera went outside of the field and like took some cool photos so I'm like you know the lighting's really great like guys are hanging out it's a cool aesthetic so like I definitely feel you, but it, it does, it turns off and on kind of depending on where you are and kind of just like, <laughs> you know, what's going on, whether you got shit to do or you're yeah. late, whatever, you know, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, I want to talk a little bit about just kind of, you talked about how, you know, growing up, we had or didn't have phones or whatever. Social media was, has been a, a kind of a recent phenomena, but I feel like today, like right now, And we've talked about this with other guests, but both the supply and the demand for all forms of content, whether it be photos, videos, graphic design, I feel like it's at an all time high for both supply and demand, like companies need content, individuals need content. And there's also, like I said, you have phones, there's nicer cameras. So like, it's easier to make content, but also the world is needing more and more of it. And you're someone who literally part of your title is a content creator. So you you are a specialist in creating content at the highest level. As someone, you know, who has that specialization, how do you, how do you view and what do you think about this current landscape? Like for me, sometimes it's a little overwhelming. I'm going to be real. Like just the amount of content we're consuming every day and I'm just curious as someone who specializes it in it, what do you think about it right now? And kind of where do you see it going a little bit? Oh, I mean, I fully agree. I think it's super overwhelming. I have time limits on like all of my social media apps because I'm like, there's a point where it just doesn't need to happen anymore. Um, I think, it, but at the same time, it's really cool. It's cool that anyone can pick up an iPhone and be heard and like share their story. And I think, you know, 10, 15 years ago, that wasn't happening. And I think we're as just as a a whole, I think we're all learning so much more through it. But I think that learning is both good and bad. Like some things, you know, the stories are maybe things we don't need to be learning. But I think there's also, you know, messages that are good get pushed and like can be learned even more. So I think it's it's weird but it's also beautiful in some ways yeah but you i i I have the impression i may be wrong but i have the impression that personally you're not a big social media guy you may look at other people's social media but you don't put a lot out there i don't no i i put out my work but that's about it yeah you put you put out things for other people because you're i mean you're or a lot of times what people put out you made really right yeah and then i'll share that as well but i'm not broadcasting my life really i think i'm i consider myself an extroverted introvert and i think sharing on social like is a bit anxiety inducing inducing at times where i'm like ah like this is cool and it's me but i'll just keep it you know for my me and my friends or whatever yeah i have no idea what you had for lunch yesterday for example so yeah <laughs> and everything is still okay the world yeah. is still spinning, you know yeah totally. what about like what about like from what about like kind of from an ego standpoint like is there any part of you that you know when you create some really really cool work that you don't necessarily get to i mean yeah you get to repost it or whatever but like a a brand might take the credit for this work that you did and you had the vision. How does that kind of uh, impact maybe your ego? Not, not necessarily your ego, but just like mentally, how does that 
how does that feel seeing sometimes these brands get credit or get a lot of attention for something where you're like, Hey, I, you know, I was the vision behind that, or I edited that i shot that. Mm -hmm. I, you know, I don't think ego is super involved, at least personally, because it is a team. It's not just me. That's like, yeah, maybe I, I did the edit solely, but there's so much many moving pieces that went into that. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, you know, it started with a concept that, you know, would have probably come from our creative director and then moved through strategy and then moved into uh, our director's hands and our producer's hands. And they kind of produced this shoot and capture. And maybe I'm part of the capture as well. And then, you know, that gets put onto a hard drive that lands on my desk um, and I get to do the edit. So it's kind of like, maybe we don't get credit as an agency, but being able to kind of own, own that it's always kind of a win for the whole team. Like if we see it posts and then it gets posted over and over, it's like, Oh, we did that sick. Let's figure out what we did right and do it again. Cause yeah. it just kind of grows everything. Yeah. That kind of reminds me, I think, I think I asked actually a similar question. I'm not repeating questions. I promise that just kind of came out naturally, but I, we asked a similar question to Kayla the yes. first time we had her on and she kind of said something similar along those lines where the people who know, know, and like, yeah. if, if they like, you know, if the people who, you know, their opinions matter, they know what's up, then like, you don't need to worry about the masses getting the credit from them because really, as long as you, the people who know, know, then like, you're good, you know? No, I agree. And I think at this point, like getting, you know, if they credit my personal account, it's, it feels like a cool little add on and another win to the whole thing. But yeah, even, you know, when the agency gets credited on something, it's like, oh, this is sick. Cause this is the whole team, you know, yeah. it's everyone involved and, and the team feels like a family. It's like, yeah. We're a team of, I think, 45. It's growing quick, so that may not be accurate, but it's really cool to, like, walk into an office after something big has launched and, like, everyone's hyped. And it, yeah. it's just, it's really fun. Is your agency uh, located in Brooklyn? So we are, uh, <clears throat> we originated in Portland, and that's kind of how I got connected. Okay. Um, and then moved to New York, and now we're also in LA. Um, so, and we're my office here is in the city. Okay. Yeah. Um, something. I mean, this may be this may be relevant to more freelance work, but also it could be relevant to kind of the agency or the team as a whole. But I'm sure working with certain clients, I know I've heard you kind of vent in the past where. Sometimes clients, and I'm not saying I fall into this category, I'm a very easy client to work with, but sometimes clients can be very picky with, you know, how they want something to something to look or how they want it to sound. Whereas, you know, a lot of times you're the expert, you know what will look the best or sound the best from a, an expert level. So how do you kind of find this balance between like, you're educated, you're the expert, you've been doing this for years, like, you know, what is the right way to do something versus, you know, maybe a, a very picky client, uh, whether it be a company or an individual wants to do things a certain way, how do you kind of navigate that, that kind of tug of war? Yeah, I think you learn to compromise a lot. Um, and sometimes it's really good. And sometimes, you know, you feel defeated. And hopefully you don't feel that very often, but, you know, I think it's about navigating <clears throat> and really just communicating to figure out, okay, what's the best, because sometimes like my idea may not fit, you know, the brief the client gives and, you know, they're trying to communicate something. And I think you, you have to take that in account and also kind of be graceful with that um, and like learn from that. But there's also, you know, it's a weird, it's a balance, right? Like you said, you have to figure out kind of how to keep that like creative integrity while also like 
you know, doing what they want and communicating the message. I think, yeah, I don't know. It's tricky. Typic yeah, yeah, typically it is. I bet it is tricky. Um, they're paying the bills, right? But you've right. got the vision. Um, yeah. Typically, and there may not be a typical for the for the projects you do for clients. Do they come to you with uh, kind of a concrete idea of, hey, this is what we're looking for, or do they uh, say, hey, look, we've got this product. We are relying on your creative juices to they let you cook, as let's say. Let you cook. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and maybe, maybe it's both. It's totally both. Yeah. It's a bit of everything, which kind of it's refreshing because sometimes you're like doing, you know, you are like Max said, cooking constantly, you're coming up with a hundred percent of everything and you just kind of get drained from that. And then a client comes along and they're like, Hey, this is exactly what I want. And you're like, perfect. It's like a plug and play situation where you know you have everything you need and you just kind of need to revamp or organize it so I think that also creates balance where like just having a variety of clients and this happens in and outside of the agency like just having different types of work and different types of clients like you get kind of a mixed pot of everything so yeah. at the end of the day, it's hard, like, you'll definitely complain about some, some project at some point, but you're also, you know, hopefully winning in another corner. Yeah, gotcha. I feel like that's kind of just, I feel like that's kind of just the nature of the industry that you're yeah. operating in. Like there's, it's uh, any, any business where you're having to outsource, especially creatively, like, a, one of the most important aspects of creativity is collaboration, I feel like, or at least in my opinion. So I feel like, of course, there's, there has to be some sort of compromise if you're going to have two ideas, you know, unless it's, you know, like you said, a situation where they let you cook, where with when brands are putting thousands of dollars into these campaigns, they want to have, I'm assuming, some influence on you know, how the final product will look. So yeah, I'm sure it's tricky, but you know, from what I see that you've been putting out, I mean, you've been cooking, you've been cooking <laughs> for real. Um, which speaking it. of, have you, do you have like a favorite project or is there something that you've worked on uh, in the past year or so that you're like, oh, this was one of my favorite or the coolest projects that I've worked on. I know when I was with you in New York, you were going to do a was it a bape union collab uh, collab yeah which yeah, i gonna, actually did you do it no i didn't do it so okay. it rained in la when we were supposed to shoot and so i had to fly home to make it on a different trip so they ended up shooting it like a week later with someone else it came out amazing Traffic. but not me um uh, am i the only one who doesn't know what what bape union well, it's two uh, different two different brands. Bape, you might know Bape. I don't know Bape. It's like Bape okay. is a like a Japanese streetwear brand, and then Union is a LA based streetwear brand, and it was a collaboration between the two. Yeah, two very notorious, very cool streetwear brands. So yes, to for you to you're going to be DP on that. Yeah, and then also editor. So. I was, it's okay. I was, it's okay. Um, it's all right. No, okay. um, but I had a feeling this, you would ask that question. So I have a favorite agency project and a favorite freelance project. Um, the the agent prepared. Let's go. <laughs> the agency project would be um, this spring slash winter. I got to shoot New York Fashion Week. Um, I think so I saw that. Yeah, we went to four shows and then additionally a fifth show kind of after the fact. Um, and I got to, it was kind of a behind the scenes look into Fashion Week um, and Nike helped fund some of these designers and then also uh, provided footwear for the runway shows and presentations. So we got to go capture that. Um, and I captured video for those four shows and then got to do the edit as well. So that was, that was super yeah. fun, super cool team. And we just got to run around and, you know, fashion is something that <clears throat> I love and 
like studied in school a bit too and just the history of it is some of my favorites so to be able to experience that especially in this city was super exciting i bet I yeah bet. i remember seeing that video and it was it was very cool was thank very you cool okay well you mentioned uh, you know that would have been enough but you mentioned that you prepared <clears throat> not just a favorite <laughs> project but a freelance yeah. project so i think <clears throat> yeah free having the two create a lot of balance we don't really do any music related stuff at the agency so like getting to work on music videos outside of that is you know a big passion of mine um and one of my friends uh Araya, who is an artist here he hit me up and we we had wanted to work for like six months i think we had been texting for like three months and then we finally met and did a photo shoot and i was like the shoot was it was so fun it was like we became friends immediately and i was like i want to do a video and yeah. we did another photo shoot here and there and i was like ah, i really want to do a video he's like be patient when i have the right song we're gonna do the video um and we ended up doing two songs in like a six and a half minute short film um yeah i'll send you the link i don't know if you've seen it but that came out along kind of like a week after his album his second album release um and yeah it was really fun amazing team on that um to and create a six and a half minute music video yeah how much how much time are you devoting to that in terms of you know filming and then yeah, you know, editing and re-editing. Him and his team came to me, and they. I think we had two weeks. I think they're like, which is kind of crazy. From yeah, like concepting to having the final edit, they're like, we have two weeks. We don't want to do one song. We want to do two, so it's you know double the length of a normal video. Um, and yeah, his name's Chris. Uh, Chris Araya and I sat down and just kind of went crazy like every time we met up it was like it our energy was on 110 percent and we weren't gonna stop for anything really like we the concepting we both had a google slide open just adding to it on two different laptops you know and fast forwarding to the editing I think we I woke up did like a kind of a structural edit for the whole thing and then went to his place he he like knows enough to also help with the edit so he hops on and I'm starting to like figure out oh we need to go shoot more to like fill in a couple scenes so then I'm starting to like find locations and like and then we go out and shoot and this is all the day the videos do and so we go out and shoot a scene we get I think we get back and have dinner and it's like 10 or 11 p.m and we have to deliver the video the next morning or you know I think it was supposed to be that night but we're like we'll do it and we'll send it like first thing before anyone wakes up yeah and he's like okay I'm I'm good I'm gonna edit until until I can't or until it's done you go to bed. I fell asleep on my floor at like 3 a.m. I woke up and he's like, get in your bed, go to sleep. And then he wakes me up at 6 a.m. or 8 a.m. And he falls asleep in my bed and I wake up and I finish the video and we sent it off. So, yeah, it was fun. It was it was crazy, but it it made it. And, and the end product, well, you feel good about Fen? I love it. Yeah. Oh, you love it. That's great. Yeah. I'll, I'll show you it dad after, after okay. we get off. Okay. So those are both very, very cool projects and I'll do my best. So whoever is listening, they should check them out. I'll try and provide some links to them on social media, but you know, now that we've talked about some of the, some of your favorite work that you've done in the past, kind of looking forward to the future, what is like, do you have, any forethought into kind of what a, I think we might have talked about this in person before, but just like what a dream role or where you see yourself evolving. You know, you're doing a lot of the the work on the front line. Like you're holding the camera, you're shooting, you're editing. 
you know, where do you see yourself progressing in terms of what you do creatively and all the, all the things that you're able to do, your skill set? How do you kind of see that evolving um, as you evolve in your career? Yeah, I think, you know, it's now it's kind of just stepping up and continuing to learn the craft and then also like get like work with bigger clients. Yeah. Um, so those are kind of the two things. I think directing is a love of mine too. And I do that with the free freelance work, but not as much with the agency. So doing more of that, you know, is definitely of interest. Um, yeah. And then kind of outside the agency, I think writing and like doing some more short films, just like very personal projects, personally funded and just kind of like, full creative control with no client is kind of like a another thing that I want to just kind of experiment with but nothing crazy yeah well I'm very excited to see you continue to evolve not just the agency work but a lot of your personal projects because I really do love seeing your personal projects and you know as your forever PA you know I would love (laughs) to you know, hop on set of a short film or anything and, and help out in any way. Um, I was kind of joking around with my sister. We were on the phone before this and I told her that I was having you on. Uh, she says, hi, by the way. Um, oh, but, uh, <laughs> but she, I was kind of, I was joking around, like I had to schedule a podcast to hang <laughs> out with you. Like, yeah. And that's, that's, a, that's totally a joke. Like, obviously, we can talk whenever, but, but I seriously, you are very busy with what you do and, you know, you're traveling around the country, you're working with some of the biggest brands in the world and some of the coolest brands in the world. Do you ever, you know, get to stop and kind of like appreciate and kind of reflect on all the cool shit that you get to do. And like some of the, some of the work that you're doing, because, you know, so much of of your schedule is go 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 and you're constantly on to the next project onto the next project how often do you get to kind of reflect or just think about how far you've come and i think you know one of the the cool things for me is like when we were shooting those videos in the hills you know out in the middle of nowhere in oregon or out uh you know we shot a bunch of really cool stuff like by that tree on that in that park in portland that was just like me and you you know making some cool videos but like i knew at that time like the quality of these videos is like is is through the roof and now it's like the whole world is getting to see it you know so it's like and that's just happened in the last two years you know so it's like it's really cool for me to see, but I'm wondering if you ever get to kind of reflect on how far you've come and like some of the cool work that you're doing, you know? Yeah, no, a hundred percent. I think there was this realization the first time I traveled with the agency, I went to Chicago and I got on the plane and I was like, the little kid in me was just like bouncing off the walls. I was like, Oh my God, this is crazy. It's a business trip. It was a business trip, but it was like, it, you know, I'm had always wanted to travel for work. I had always wanted to be working for that. I think that was the first time getting to be on set with Nike. And it was, you know, it was just like a first, it was a first time for a lot of different things. And it kind of like, I sat down in my plane seat and I was like, it just gave me the time to like, really think about it and realize like, this is a dream that I have had for so long and you know at that point also calling new york home and like leaving new york to go somewhere new and it was it was yeah it was like just a flood of emotions in kind of sitting with that for the first time and kind of coming to that realization of you know wanting to have the agency experience and wanting to do all these different things and and now i I try to do it weekly and like either meditate or just sit on the train. I train into work every day. So it kind of gives me a second to like collect and think about everything and just appreciate it. Cause you know, it's, yeah, it's crazy. Yeah. Well, I'm glad that you do get to do that because like I said, the, 
the work that you're doing really is in a, in a league of its own. And I knew that when we were making videos and you were sleeping on my couch and now that you're in New York, working for an agency, working for some of the biggest brands in the world. I'm glad that now the world is getting to see that at the same time. So um, <clears throat> that's awesome that you get to reflect on that for, for real. Um, yeah. Okay. Now it's time for, or dad, do you have any final questions before we go to our, uh, I have a lot of questions about how to take a decent photograph. Yeah, cause... we have a, we have another <laughs> we have a, a photographer next to me. My dad takes quite a few photos as well. I take a lot of bad photos. No, <laughs> thank God for digital. Uh, but uh, he no. take a lot of great photos, Dad. Seriously. No, I, uh, I. No, I don't really have a question, but I, it, it's more of a comment, and that is that uh, for someone who's never been a creative i've you know been a lawyer and a mediator and there is some creativity to my job but i, I i'm a little bit jealous of uh of what you do because i think i like photography and i like film and i think it's really cool that people uh have this creative artistic side and and put out these beautiful things or cool things or i mean i looked at your work online and it, it's really it's really uniquely special it's it's and uh so Thank I'm not you. going to ask you a question. I'm just going to give you a compliment, which is, uh, <laughs> uh, you know, you're, you're, you're doing really good stuff. And it's really nice when I write down in my you know, notes that uh, uh, I wanted to work, uh, I wanted to make, uh, uh, incorporate art into, you know, my, my work. Yeah. And that's really cool that you've done that. People, yeah. A lot of people can't say that they are doing what they're passionate about or what they hope to do. Uh, a lot of folks are doing jobs and they're just fine. That's work, but it's uh, it's not necessarily a passion that they're uh, pursuing. If you get to, you know, if you if you love your job, right, you never work a day in your life. And I know you're working hard, so don't get me wrong, <laughs> but uh, it's very cool. And I would like to learn how to take a decent photograph. Yeah, maybe part two will be a half check in on how Fen's doing, half tutorial on yeah, taking good photos. Be the master class for sure. Exactly. Yes. yes, I like that. Okay. Our ending segment is what are you eating, reading, preaching, and plugging? So four little quick hitter questions. The first one, I know Ollie claims to be the chef in the household, but what are you is there anything that you're chefing up in the kitchen or a Brooklyn bedsty eatery that you would like to highlight? What what are you eating over there? on the yeah. east coast in brooklyn um so my roommate ollie oliver he just started a supper club oh, and, and yeah it's called big love supper club and they just did a like a test meal and it was like the best meal i've had in what was it? a long time it was a so it's him and his partner and they did a ukrainian themed um or a ukrainian inspired like vegan meal um nice. so it was it was three courses um oh, it was just so much so much good food it was i believe it always yeah, all cooked for no, me when i was there it was, yeah, it was incredible treat. yeah um but yeah like a mushroom salad um what else it was a seven layer cake and yeah it was just so much good stuff. Yeah, I don't I don't doubt that one bit. Okay, what about are you reading anything? I don't know if you have the time, but is there anything that you're reading or an article, just any any text mm -hmm. that you would want to highlight or share with the world? I don't think I I read like magazines here and there and like that works. And them stuff like that, but there's nothing like specific I would necessarily what about what like what magazine? uh kaleidoscope what else here we go um yeah i've never i've never heard of that yeah a bunch what of just of magazines though? i've heard of it oh god <laughs> it's like a art photo kind of editorial magazine okay very cool yeah. okay kaleidoscope um kaleidoscope. Preaching. next what are you preaching is there i think you've kind of done a little bit of this throughout the episode and just you're reflecting but is there you know, any motto or just kind of 
some some lasting words of wisdom that you would want to instill on our global audience yeah i think there's power in doing and just putting yourself out there whatever it is you know take that step and like i don't know just start doing it even if you feel like you don't know what you're doing you know if if something's totally new to you like just begin because it's going to put you so much further I couldn't yep. have said it better yep. myself when you know when you said that earlier i was like yeah that's a bar yep. you, <laughs> I'm, I'm glad you said it because that, that is a common theme on our show we've had a <clears throat> we've had a lot of people on who that's something that they that they say is one of the reasons why they've been able to do what they're doing is because they just started they did it a yeah. lot of people have passions or aspirations but none of that happens unless you actually act and do. So I think that's a perfect thing to preach. Um, okay. Lastly, what are you plugging? Is there, you know, anything you'd want to plug, mm. shout out, you know, any upcoming work that you did or, you know, I, I could just, I yeah, know. I'd love to plug the array of video. It sounds yeah. like you're gonna put links, you know, all over. So um that's definitely a big one um what else i think that's kind of i don't know i would okay i'll plug for you well i don't know if you want yeah. this plug but like right. <laughs> if, if uh, like if anyone in new york is looking for the best you know music videos out or photography like i don't know how much time you have to to do projects like that but I would like to plug you like I was yeah. just, uh, you know, in preparing for this, I was, I was looking at your reel and looking at your photography and obviously your video videography, but like, dude, it's next level. Like it's, it's really, really top. So much better than mine. If, uh, <laughs> if anyone, if you have the availability, you know, and people out there are looking for your services, shit, I know yeah. you hate when I bug you all the time, but if other people are throwing bread at you, then <laughs> yeah. And, and just to give you some street cred, you're the guy who, like we talked about, did the marathon minute t-shirt, which is yes. wildly popular. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So your work is on display all over the world as people, you know, tramps around in the marathon minute tees. Yeah. Totally. Yeah. So I'll plug you. Um, yeah. But... I'll, I'll plug myself. If there's any like, other photographers video people that just want to chat too i think it's yeah. just like growing the community there's a lot of power in that for sure i think that's <clears throat> that's a great point and very admirable of you um okay fen this well, actually a kind of funny story uh when i started the podcast over a year ago you you and kyle were my intended first and second guests I was like, okay, this is going to be so cool. Like I'm going to talk about, you know, creatives and share the inside look on like what goes through these people's heads. And like, you know, I'm friends with them. So like I can get, you know, them to speak freely and like share these stories and all that. And so, I mean, I, I not only have you to thank for the marathon minute aesthetic, but a lot of kind of where this original concept originated was, hanging out with people like yourself during that time when we were all locked in the house and didn't have shit to do. I think that really opened up my eyes to how much I really enjoyed, you know, being on set or being a, being a PA or just this, this whole space that you operate in and, you know, getting to know some of the lingo from you and just kind of, like I said, being around, I, I then felt comfortable where I can now talk to a photographer or a video editor or a designer and feel like I can speak freely and knowledgeably because I have spent so much time with you and was able to pick your brain. I know that when I, whenever I was on these uh, shoots with you, I was asking a ton of questions and just kind of acting as a sponge because I was so interested. So yeah. thank you, not just for this interview and for the design, but you know, yeah, we're playing a role in making this all happen. So oh, of course, thank you. That means a lot. Yeah. Real. Better late than never. And we made it happen. And 
rather than being guest one or two, you're guest 26, but uh, <laughs> 26, 27, 27, 27, 27. But uh, hey, uh, fan, I really appreciate your time. Uh, it was, it's nice to meet you. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Long overdue. I've heard a lot about you. And now, uh, now I got to meet you and learn a lot about what you're doing. And it's interesting um, and inspiring stuff. And I'm really happy that you've, uh, you found uh, what you were looking for. Uh, in Brooklyn, New York, my birthplace. Yeah. I love it. All right, bro. This is uh we can we can cut the pod, but yeah, this this is great. I'm gonna stop the recording. Sure. But we did it.